You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> A Revolt of the Gods by Ambrose Bierce Performed by Otis Jiry My father was a deodorizer of dead dogs. My mother kept the only shop for the sale of cat's meat in my native city. They did not live happily. The difference in social rank was a chasm which could not be bridged by the vows of marriage. It was indeed an ill-sorted and most unlucky alliance, and, as might have been foreseen, it ended in disaster. One morning, after the customary squabbles at breakfast, my father rose from the table, quivering and pale with wrath, and, proceeding to the parsonage, thrashed the clergyman who had performed the marriage ceremony. The act was generally condemned, and public feeling ran so high against the offender, that people would permit dead dogs to lie on their property until the fragrance was deafening rather than employ him. And the municipal authorities suffered one bloated old mastiff to utter itself from a public square in so clamorous an exhalation that passing strangers supposed themselves to be in the vicinity of a sawmill. My father was indeed unpopular. During these dark days, the family's sole dependence was on my mother's emporium for cat's meat. The business was profitable. In that city, which was the oldest in the world, the cat was an object of veneration. Its worship was the religion of the country. The multiplication and addition of cats were a perpetual instruction in arithmetic. Naturally, any inattention to the wants of a cat was punished with great severity in this world and the next, so my good mother numbered her patrons by the hundred. Still, with an unproductive husband and seventeen children, she had some difficulty in making both ends cats meet, and at last the necessity of increasing the discrepancy between the cost price and the selling price of her carnal wares drove her to an expedient which proved eminently disastrous. She conceived the unlucky notion of retaliating by refusing to sell cat's meat until the boycott was taken off her husband. On the day when she put this resolution in practice, the shop was thronged with excited customers, and others extended in turbulent and restless masses up four streets out of sight. Inside there were nothing but cursing, crowding, shouting, and menace. Intimidation was freely resorted to, several of my younger brothers and sisters being threatened with cutting up for the cats, but my mother was as firm as a rock, and the day was a black one for Sardasa, the ancient and sacred city that was the scene of these events. The lockout was vigorously maintained, and 750,000 cats went to bed hungry. The next morning, the city was found to have been placarded during the night with a proclamation of the Federated Union of Old Maids. This ancient and powerful order averred through its supreme executive head that the boycotting of my father and the retaliatory lockout of my mother were seriously imperiling the interest of religion. The proclamation went on to state that if arbitration were not adopted by noon that day, all the old maids of the Federation would strike, and strike they did. The next act of this unhappy drama was an insurrection of cats. These sacred animals, seeing themselves doomed to starvation, held a mass meeting and marched in procession through the streets, swearing and spitting like fiends. This revolt of the gods produced such consternation that many pious persons died of fright, and all business was suspended to bury them in past terrifying resolutions. Matters were now about as bad as it seemed possible for them to be. Meetings among representatives of the hostile interests were held, but no understanding was arrived at that would hold. Every agreement was broken as soon as made, and each element of the discord was frantically appealing to the people. A new horror was in store. 
It will be remembered that my father was a deodorizer of dead dogs, but was unable to practice his useful and humble profession because no one would employ him. The dead dogs, in consequence, reeked rascally. Then they struck. From every vacant lot and public dumping ground, from every hedge and ditch and gutter and cistern, every crystal rill and the clabbered waters of all the canals and estuaries, from all the places, in short, which from time immemorial have been preempted by dead dogs and consecrated to the uses of them and their heirs and successors forever, they trooped a numerous, a ghastly crew. Their procession was a mile in length. Midway of the town it met the procession of cats in full song. The cats instantly exalted their backs and magnified their tails, the dead dogs, and covered their teeth as in life, and erected such of their bristles as still adhered to the skin. The carnage that ensued was too awful for relation. The light of the sun was obscured by flying fur, and the battle was waged in the darkness, blindly and regardless. The swearing of the cats was audible miles away, while the fragrance of the dead dogs desolated seven provinces. How the battle might have resulted, it is impossible to say, but when it was at its fiercest, the Federation Union of Old Maids came running down a side street and sprang into the thickest of the fray. A moment later, my mother herself bore down upon the warring hosts, brandishing a cleaver and laid about her with great freedom and impartiality. My father joined the fight, the municipal authorities engaged, and the public, the general public, converging on the battlefield from all points of the compass, consumed itself in the center as it pressed in from the circumference. Last of all, the dead held a meeting in the cemetery, and resolving on a general strike, began to destroy vaults, tombs, monuments, headstones, willows, angels, and young sheep in marble, everything they could lay their hands on. By nightfall the living and the dead were alike exterminated, and where the ancient and sacred city of Sardassa had stood, nothing remained but an excavation filled with dead bodies, and building materials, shreds of cat and blue patches of decayed dog. The place is now a vast pool of stagnant water in the center of a desert. The stirring events of those few days constituted my industrial education, and so well have I improved my advantages that I am now Chief of Misrule to the Dukes of Disorder, an organization numbering 13 million American working men.